In this video today, we will look at fractions and we will compare fractions learning how they can be equivalent using models. We will also take a look at multiplying fractions times a number that means the same thing as one and dividing fractions that mean the same thing as one, showing how that shows equivalence. All right, our first example is three-fourths and six-eighths. Let's look at three-fourths and let's multiply three-fourths times something that means the same thing as the whole number one. Now, here's where this is a really important thing to know. You know already if we said three-fourths times one, we'd get three-fourths back, right? Let's look at this number right here. Two over two. What does that actually mean? Two halves. Two divided by two means one, doesn't it? So when you have a fraction and it's the same number on the numerator and the same number on the denominator, you're gonna have a fraction that means the whole number one. All right, so when we multiply straight across, three times two is six and four times two is eight, we know in our head that this is saying three-fourths times one. It should mean the same thing as three-fourths. Let's look at the model over here and let's explain why. Okay. Let's look at the denominator four. We know the denominator four tells us how many equal parts to cut the model into. So we're putting it into four equal parts. That is our denominator. The numerator, which is three, tells us how many parts to shade. So we're gonna shade one, two, three. Okay, here's three-fourths. Now below, let's do the same thing. When you're doing this, make sure that you have your eight equal parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're gonna fill in six of those parts. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right? Now, if you will look at your model up here, this part right here is three-fourths, right? And this part right here is six-eighths. But it's the same amount, isn't it? You see that? All right, so if it's, this is a Hershey bar, <laughs> you have a Hershey bar cut into four parts, right? And you're getting to eat three big pieces. If this is a Hershey bar, you're cutting it into eight pieces and you're eating six of those. You're eating the same amount of chocolate either way. Larger bites, smaller bites, three eighths, six eighths, it's the same amount, okay? All right, so this next example, we're going to look at one fourth and we're going to multiply one fourth times something that means the whole number one. Remember, if you have the same number on the top as the bottom, three divided by three means one. So we know that we should get an equivalent fraction. All right, one times three is three, four times three is 12. Now let's move over to the models and let's determine if it's truly equivalent, one-fourth and three-twelfths. All right, so we know that we're going to have four equal parts, equal sections, okay? That's our denominator that is telling us to draw four equal sections and we're going to shade in one of those sections, okay? Now let's draw three-twelfths. So we're going to shade in three of those twelfths. Look at one-fourth compared to three twelfths. It should be the same amount. All right, so I want to show you just another quick way to prove that these are equivalent, one-fourth and three-twelfths. Some of you may be familiar with this. 
Some call it the butterfly method. I call it cross multiplication. Always start at the bottom and multiply going diagonal. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 1 is 12. Alright? So when these numbers are the same, that shows equivalence. And that is another way to know certainly that these are equivalent. All right, so look at this example. Notice something different. We are dividing, but also notice we're dividing by something that means the whole number one, because two halves, that's two divided by two, that means one. So we should get something back that is equivalent to six twelfths. Let's do it. Six divided by two is three. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So let's come over to the model and let's compare and let's prove that 6 twelfths is truly equivalent to 3 6. So we're going to shade in 6 of those twelfths. Now let's look below. Let's show the model for 3 6. Now we've shaded in 3 of those 6. Let's compare. 3 6 compared to 6 twelfths. And you can see it's the same amount. You can always check it with the cross multiplication method. 6 twelfths compared to 3 6. Start at the bottom always. 12 times 3 is 36. 6 times 6 is 36. It is equivalent. All right, so let's look at this last example. It says select all of the answers that would be equivalent to one third. Okay, so remember when we are finding equivalent fractions, you want to multiply your original number times something that means one. All right, so let's look at the first one. One third times what? will give you two-thirds. Is there anything that you can multiply one-third by that means one to get to two-thirds? If you plugged in two, two halves, you would get two-sixths. So that won't work, will it? Okay, so you know this one is not going to be an equivalent fraction. Let's look at this next one. Five-fifteenths. Is there a number that you can multiply one-third by to get to five-fifteenths? Well, let's try this one. Five-fifths. One times five is five. Three times five is fifteen. So yes, five-fifteenths is equivalent. All right, let's look at letter C. Is there anything to multiply one-third by to get to one-ninth? All right. Well, we've got to keep that one, and if you said times one something, it's you, you're not going to get you're not going to get your three. It's not going to change into a nine, is it? That just doesn't make sense. So this one will not work. Let's look at the next one. How can you go from a one third to a four twelfths? Let's try one times four. Right? Let's try this one. Four fourths. 1 times 4 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. So we found one, didn't we? Circle it. All right, so let's look at letter E. How can we go from 1 third to 2 six? What can we multiply by? Can you multiply two times 2 halves? Let's try it. 2 halves. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So we found another equivalent fraction. All right? So the main thing to remember is if you multiply times something that means the whole number 1, or if you divide by something that means the whole number 1, you will get an equivalent fraction.